Meredith, it is great to talk to you um, as part of the Ladies of Film interview series. And uh, you are such an amazing actress and, you know, you've done a lot more than that. So it would be great to hear about some of the highlights of your career and stuff you've done. So I'm really excited to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much. I'm I'm really honored to be here. And as just so for so people can understand who was just licking my chest. This is Hope, fo <laughs> pandemic foster dog number, I think, 14. So, yeah, she's still seeking her forever home. But uh, but and she's amazing. So anyway, so she like she's she wants to be on camera for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? She might be in a movie. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah. She's I think she looks like she should be in like a Batgirl movie. She's got a little mask over her face. <laughs> <laughs> so how did it all begin for you with the acting like with um, acting? How did, where did it all start for you? You know, I can't remember not wanting to be an actor. Although I do remember wanting to be a singer first. Uh, I remember way back at St. Joseph's Elementary School in Keene, New Hampshire. And I this was like long before people did vision boards, but they they had asked us to do um, kind of, we were, it was a big poster board of what we what our career wanted to be. And I remember that was fifth grade. And I remember clear as day, like having like something I pulled out of a magazine, like OG vision board, right? Um, a spotlight and a woman singing. So um, I guess as, as early as fifth grade, I knew, I can't, like I said, I can't remember one ever wanting to be anything else. That's awesome. So yeah. how, what training did you take to become, did you take any training to become, to start acting or, you know, were you given advice on how to begin um, this career? Yeah, I, so yeah, I had, I was really lucky because I, um, I was really lucky to get a lot of good training at the, at St. Joseph's Elementary School. Again, I, in fifth and sixth grade, you got to, we did two plays a year. And so that was the beginning of when I, like, I, I got to sing Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. Uh, and I got to play, um, I got to be, play Eva Perone from Mabita. I got to play Nancy from Oliver, you know, as a, as a kid. And so I was really lucky there. And my mom let me, you know, go into voice lessons and she was very supportive. And the summer that I did summer theater, um, I was doing Annie in fifth grade. So I was always training. And then I was just really lucky that when then when we moved across the state and I and I was in junior high and high school, especially high school, we had a really, really good arts education program. So I was in drama department from day one of high school. I was in a magical singer and in choir. And and that that part of my education, it really saved me because my, my it was kind of a tumultuous there's all, some tumultuous years in my childhood with um, divorce and addictions and all sorts of, you know, stuff that makes you a creative individual. Right. Mm -hmm. And, but that, that was my home. Like I really was, you know, they say, you know, I guess back then they called them, you know, the drama geeks or whatever, but yeah. that was my home. We had, we, that's where we all hang out, hung out. We had lockers there and it was just a place where we, we fit in, you know, and in high school, everybody is so worried about fitting in, you know, like now as adults, you realize that their individuality is what makes you like the things that make you different are so awesome. But when you're young, you, you don't feel that you want to, you want to have a place to go where you fit in. So yeah, I was really lucky. And then I, um, so all through high school and I was doing, you know, other programs outside of, high school and then I went to University of New Hampshire on a theater scholarship and then I just was just so so I wouldn't say starstruck but I was struck I was like California struck I just I'd grown up in the cold I seven years in Alaska the rest of my childhood in New Hampshire and I just wanted to get to California so I left University of New Hampshire after a year came out studied at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts here in LA and then and then the rest is history. And then I, you know, trained like crazy all through my career, you know, 
studied with every cold reading teacher, theatrical teachers. I mean, just um, have always been continued my training. That's awesome. So what, yeah. was, what was your what was your first professional job as an actress? And what was that experience like, if you can remember? Well, so I always say my first professional job if you is when I did Annie at because it was a summer stock theater and all the actors came in from like New York City, you know. But really, so my first, so that was my first theater. I consider a professional job. But my first time, it was just it's so funny. I was just talking about this to my <laughs> producing partner yesterday because I was singing this weird little song and he said, What did you just make that song up? And I said, No. That was my first paid gig. Um, back in the day, one of the trades we had in town, like way it was called drama log, long gone, because everything's online now. But yeah, um, and but you, it came it came out on Thursday. You put your headshot in the mail, and I got this. In my first ever audition in Los Angeles. I booked like for for something on on film or television. I book made $50 and I was like, wow, this is gonna be easy, right? First audition, book it. Um, and it was this silly little, uh, it's not silly, it's actually an awesome little thing about teaching kids about dinosaurs. And I still remember the song that I sang. So I consider that, you know, I got paid, I auditioned, I booked it, I got paid. Um, but then a lot of people know well, you know, if you look at my IMDb, you'll see that I was in Pleasantville. So that would be the real, like the one that. Um, okay, now I'm gonna have to watch that again. So I'm gonna now I'm gonna have to look out for you in it. <laughs> I well, see it you'll right see it's. I actually I'm have. so baby faced. It blows I, my mind. Like I yeah, I actually have it. I your IMDb listed young. up here, and I'm like, oh snap! <laughs> yeah, you were in that movie. Okay, I'm gonna have to look out for that now. So yeah. it's I I that was so that was. I was going to set every day. It was shooting in the hills of Malibu. You know, Toby Maguire, um, Reese Witherspoon. I had a very small role as a high school student. And in fact, my one line didn't even make it into the film. I think you hear me giggle, but you'll see me. And and um, and sometimes like, like I've had friends pull off, pull out a screenshot and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that I ever looked that young. And then in addition, I was in the 50s, so I'm in black and white. And I, I did work in color too, but like these black and white photos of me, I, it might've been, it, like it could have been right from there. It was such a great, that was such an amazing experience. So I just remember driving to that job, just like, couldn't believe that I was getting paid to go live in this fake little town that they had built in the hills. And I was getting this beautiful hair and makeup, like, and just in the, the vintage clothing. And it was, I mean, it was a dream. I couldn't believe that I was actually doing what I came out to do. That's amazing. And yeah, you yeah. start out, it looks like from looking at you, you start out with a lot of small roles. Oh yeah, yeah. No. I mean, just um, I would do. I was doing like anything and everything, uh, within reason, obviously. But like yesterday, uh, my one of my producers and partners here, and we play this game, like like residual, like like let's guess how much this residual is for. And I said, well, you've got to tell me what the project is, so I can kind of have an educated guess. And he says. Wednesday afternoon, and I said, oh my gosh, I did that for AFI, second year student, you know, at AFI, I was practically an extra, I mean, I, I was played businessman's wife, and I'm still getting a residual on it, I, I, I said, and I said, it's got to be 20 years ago that I shot that at AFI, so yeah, I was just, I was hungry, and I loved working and I just went for it. <laughs> you did. You did. And yeah, I clearly I'm look I mean, I'm looking at your IMDB right now as we speak. You know, you've done a lot of stuff. What was your what was your first like if you had a lead role, what was your first lead role and what was that like? What was that experience like? If you remember what it was. 
Oh, so like if we take if we take away like short films, and that's not to discredit short films because I have they're done the some amazing they're, short yeah, films. Yeah, they're the foundation. Um, but if we take away the short films, um, yeah, I I I would get. I mean, I think it's it. So for thrillers, it has to be killer advice for I mean I've done some wonderful like but uh, I've done so many great ensemble pieces but I would say killer advice and then the wrong blind date because and they're very obviously they're so different um so the wrong blind date I'm finally the romantic lead right and right. um and even though I'm being terrorized but I'm like I'm the romantic lead which really nice because women of a certain age you know you like you there's you, you get to a point where there's a decline in you being the romantic lead and so right. I'm like after all of the wrong do movies I'd done and some amazing roles in wrong movies but I'm always like you know the tormented mother dealing with the you know the child and all of that stuff and then finally so so but I would say so killer advice such a different role such a great role to be offered and then and then um and then not too long after doing the wrong blind date and and both of these people are directors that i had worked with several times before um you know maybe i'd only worked with jared jared cohen maybe i'd only gosh i guess i'd only worked with him once before when he offered me that and both of those were it was really nice because both of those were just were direct offers they just said hey both with um david and jared they just said hey do you want to do this and and the 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 lesson is that is that with jared i'd just done one supporting role with him but with david i had done some really awesome supporting roles but i also said yes whenever he just needed someone to do a cold open or i just said yes because i love working and i love being on set and so saying yes really worked out for me because then suddenly there i get a script and i didn't he said i want you to play you know so and so in this thing and then i look and i'm like oh oh Oh, this is the lead. <laughs> yeah, so I will say Killer Advice was a phenomenal, like a great movie. And, you know, seeing you play this evil psychopath in it was, no offense, but, but, but you just pulled oh, off yeah. so wonderfully. I mean, and this movie had a great cast, you know, Kate Watson and um, Gigi Gustin. And, yeah. you know, you just, you know, you brought it on as this, you know, supposed to be a therapist who was supposed to be, you know, help our lead character out but you have these evil intentions down and just for the record i've talked to jared a few times wonderful guy you know i've talked yeah. to him for a couple flicks one where he one that he directed and one that he actually starred in um, oh wow called uh dawn last year i got to talk to him about that oh and, i haven't so, seen that oh he's good in it he's like he's the lead yeah. in it and oh how cool it's like the uber ride to hell basically it's like him and his uh. girlfriend get picked up for an uber ride and the uber driver is the care is the titular dawn and she's just she's out there oh, she's, how she's cool psychotic <laughs> so i have to check that out he's yeah i love working with that group uh with his team we had a we had a good time i just went and did um that that fight one that he did for tubi that um gosh you know but I should I should have my own IMDb here, right? Like <laughs> I know you probably yeah. have it there, but wait. But, I'm, gonna, um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to pull this one up. Yeah, let's see. There's and he's been Vendetta, Vendetta, Lord of the Streets. He's done a Lord yeah, of done, the Streets, Lord of the Streets. I just watched that. Yeah, I just watched that when it first came out. So yeah, wait. I'm the the parole board uh, person that, that I knew denies it. Parole. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm like, wait a minute. Now that I mentioned that, I think about it. yeah, that was you. Like, oh snap! Small world, please know. Yeah, it's a very awesome. at the end of the day, it's a pretty small town. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That that's amazing. Yeah. So, so tell us about your experience on the the wrong blind date because you mentioned you were you know, the wrong blind movie. date yeah because yeah, you're, you're going in the opposite direction from killer advice now you've gone from playing the evil one to now the, the romantic lead what was that like oh it was gosh well everything that we shot like in the last past 
past three years, you know, just had an added, um, just, it just did a lot, there, there was a lot more things to consider, obviously, with COVID testing and, you know, so, um, so the wrong blind date was a lot. I think, I mean, I think I had like 13 wardrobe changes. Um, I, uh, and we shoot a lot of times we shoot these lifetime movies really fast. And, but I'd worked, I'd worked with, uh, Dave before, and I don't want to butcher his name. I think it's, I, I, you know what, Dakota. Anyway, oh, David, I, I can't Dick, believe- David, Dick, David Dicoteau? I think it's- Is that, how, I don't, is, I don't I know think so. how to say Yeah, he's a, he's a great director. I've seen like a- Yes, book. yes. No, he's so done- So David, I would worked with a bunch. So I, the good news is that I knew how David worked. Like I know that he is no nonsense. He gets the job done. You better show up. You better know your lines. You better hit your mark and be ready. Yeah. And um, and so knowing that, thank God that as I came when I came in for a lead on that, I'd worked with David at this point so much that I just knew how he worked. So I knew we were going to work really fast. And then I've worked with Vivica. You know, that's with Vivica. So I'd worked with Vivica so much as well. So I just knew how how they work as a team and how so but it was it was a lot because when you're when you're doing that you think of how many characters come through like you have to interact with and how as humans we're different people you're different people with your estranged ex-husband than you are with your teenage daughter than you are with your best friend at work than you are with your therapist and then, then of course, and you are with your brand new love interest. So every, so, cause that's humans are complex in that way. So, yeah. so having, um, knowing each of those relationships and how they fit into your life is that puzzle is just super fun to, to explore, but it was great. It was really fun. Um, to get to, like I said, even though it, it um, cause a lot of times, you know, I'm the best friend or, you know, like I said, I'm this, the, the harried mom. And, and so it was fun to have that. Yeah. And, and I, I got to explore like all the, all the aspects of her, you know, bitter divorce, mother, um, running her own business. So it's just, it's great. And, and I, I'm just really grateful that Lifetime, you know, gives the opportunity for us to like really, explore these kind of sometimes crazy and <laughs> characters yeah, exactly and i will say david is probably one of the most versatile directors i have ever seen because he's done so many genre he's probably done like probably practically every genre of film imaginable yeah but yeah he's exactly. he's really and he's really just smart career-wise like he is just been around and like just longevity and he told me he actually said he started out like doing like craft service you know like the snacks on movies back in the day so he's yeah. had quite the span he's moved up yeah he's, career. Really, he's yeah. One of those ones that really moved up that ladder so yeah yeah you see it, it took all that hard work and here he is like one of the most versatile directors in hollywood yeah right? you any- know i just um i just second unit directed for david seven projects last year so I second unit directed um, all of season two of Keeping Up with the Joneses for him, and then I and then we have a uh, we have a, a second one coming out that's a hopefully a first season. It'll, hopefully it's going to be um, a success. It's with Jack A. and it's called the Gabby Luck Mysteries. And so um, I I also second unit directed that, but David also let me cast some of the smaller characters. Um, so I got to, so that was, I was like proud mama on set, like bidding to like give my friends, my, you know, I, my actor friends, the opportunity, um, many of whom had never been in a lifetime movie. So I got to, and then sadly I got COVID during that shoot. So I was also supposed to act in the Gabby Luck diaries or mysteries rather. And, um, and I had to bail sadly and so I actually bumped up an actress that I was going to have play um a hostess and she got my role so (laughs) wow 
Well, at least something that came out of it. And yeah, let's talk about that now. You're behind the scenes work because you're also a producer now. Yes. Um, how, did, how did that all come about? Like, how did you, where did it all start with, with producing? Well, so what I, how I initially started producing is that I, I always felt like once the project was done, there was like, I wanted to do more to get it out in the world. And especially some of these lower budget indie things that I would really believe in. Um, because there were, I would do a lot of these wonderful lower budget indie things and then be really disappointed when like nothing happened with them. Like, and be really proud of the work and, and, and really think, oh gosh, dad, this is going to go to Sundance. Like, you know, like we're, this is going to get seen and then it doesn't. And all of that energy and, and the world doesn't really get to see it. And so, um, so that's kind of how I started to come in as a producer is just I just had all of this ideas and energy of how we could get the work out there more. And so initially it was just, you know, like, hey, bring me on, you know, as an associate and I'll get I'll I'll I'll, I'll get you this. And then bring and then it moved on to producing my own stuff and having my own ideas about like little, you know, I'm a really active member of the television academy of the emmys and i and i just and i started producing things for their they have they had a new cat it's not as new anymore but about five years ago well maybe seven now because of covid years um they they started allowing like digital short form on the ballot and so yeah. that's when i started to i saw an opportunity to, to produce some short form things for there so um so now, and then now I just finished. Um, so I just thought, I like this too. I, I love acting. Uh, but as Dave said to me, he goes, I don't think you can have too many jobs in this industry. You know, like I, um, I love acting. I, but then I also just love being on set. And I've also, I've always been a producer. Like when I'm on set, I have a hard time staying in my lane. I really want to make sure everything is working. And that's kind of, I mean, producing is just like everything from like, you know, making sure the toilets are clean for the actors to like, you know, like it, it really runs a big gamut. And I'm, and that kind of energy, I've always had that kind of energy of wanting to make sure everything works. So, um, so I just jumped into that and then, and mostly it started out projects I was in, but then I expanded because I would see an opportunity for something that I thought this could get out there in this fashion, let me, and that's what happened with um, this short that we, we, uh, we actually, uh, our lead actor ended up getting a daytime Emmy nomination, that short that I did right before the lockdown for COVID and it's called Stacks. I'm not in it at all like I it's completely um it's a uh completely African-American cast African-American director but I came I believed in the project and I was like we got to get it out there we got to get it in festivals we got to and then 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 we got it on the daytime Emmy ballot and, you know so um so I love that too that's phenomenal now I just huh? produced I really excited I just produced my first um I don't like to call it reality, like what lifestyle, I'm going to call it lifestyle. I produced my first lifestyle show and um, we shot that in San Diego. We have a segment with Sammy Hagar. It's like a love, it's a love letter to like the bar culture of San Diego. And I, and, and hopefully I think there'll be a home for it and we'll expand on that. So yes. that was kind of the first time. I mean, I'm a producer on it, but I was really in the trenches, like more uh, um, like in the trenches of everything from pre-production to being there, the producer on set every day so that the lead host could relax and the other people could. And so it's fun. I couldn't, I, I could, I could never, I don't ever see myself stop acting, but being like di diversifying what yeah. I do in this industry feels really good too. That's awesome. Like I gotta say, well, <laughs> you're, you're just mentioning how you want to get all these works out that you do and it's hard sometimes. And that's why you became a producer. I think that's great because we're in an era now where we're getting lost stuff that was, they, you know, they might've shot it like years ago still have not seen the light of day and now they're slowly popping up again you know thanks to like 
various producers who see this work and it's like, you know what, there's potential in this. Let's get this out there. You know, that's what that's kind of like what you're doing right now. And I think that's amazing. And, you know, as long as I mean, I think if a producer and director should be a collaborative effort because I've heard stories about producers ruining a director's vision because they don't see it fit like certain certain films. But I could see, I see you as one of those ones who will, who will collaborate with a director or even, you know, yeah. to, to make sure that their vision is intact as well as, you know, you getting it out there because you want to show the best piece of film imaginable or, te you know, television show. Yeah, it's always, I've always uh, loved the, like, I've always loved the directors when I produce because, because the, so I haven't yet had the experience and I'm sure I will because, you know, that's how the business goes, but always loved the directors. And that's why I want to get behind um, that. But it's funny that it's interesting that you say that because I have a, um, an actress that I had, I met through the television Academy and she had put her heart and soul into making this film years ago. And um, she's a, dis she's a disabled actress and she had like funded herself and like, and, and it just, nothing happened with it. I mean, and the heartbreak, I mean, she had Emmy, Emmy award-winning actor in the lead and it just, nothing happened with it. And so, um, if you look at it, it's on, on, on my MDB, it's, I believe the, it, the title is Quest now, like, you know. And so I had gone to her and I said, listen, you know, like, and everybody had said, you know, it's not HD. It was done in this time that it was just like, and I said, listen, streaming and web series is like, we let's, you know, edit this into a web series. This is like, and you can get it out to the world. Like it's not, you didn't get it out in the fashion you'd hoped, but now it was sitting like literally a hard drive like sitting there like it's a gift that we could just unwrap it and repackage it and she ended up getting you know qualified to be on the primetime emmy ballot as an actress for that and it was just sat there for years you know what i mean just and figuratively collecting dust you know and then there so yeah there's with all the streaming and and all of the places it's like if you have that dream or if there's something do it you know like find that i mean i i i'm like i'm part of, like i'm like i should find all my old stuff and just throw it on tiktok it's hilarious like you see the stuff i did for the last 30 years in this industry <laughs> it's like <laughs> hilarious to see where i came from yeah, um, that's awesome. I got totally I, retro, you know. <laughs> that's funny you mentioned that because our um our first interviewer for Ladies of Film, um, uh -huh. a South African actress named Liesel Ehlers, she uh, uh -huh. mentioned she did a film before COVID and before she did her um her second major film. It was a sci-fi film called The Construct, and it never it she shot this in twenty eighteen. It never got released, and so she finally told me like I think it might be coming to Netflix soon. Finally, after like five years. But, you know, it's like, I, I understand all that. And then you have all this one label that came out last year. They started releasing long lost, like 80s and 90s horror flicks shot oh, on video. Wow. Like the <gasps> ones that like filmmakers did themselves, like they 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 found them and they collaborate. They started finding the directors, collaborating with them. It's like, you know, let's, we want to release this out to the public for the new generation of fans. And they, they've they been doing pretty well. And one of the films was actually lost for 30 years. Because oh the guy, my gosh, that's ran, awesome! Because he ran out of money for post production, and I actually got to end. He was telling me, he's like, I ran out of money to do post production, so I left it for thirty years. And this company contacted me, and they said, you know, we what we can finish the post production for you, and we'll release it. And yeah, it finally <sighs> came out. It just came out after after thirty years. It's just crazy. It, it's it makes me think because I've got some projects. I mean, I did a project years and years ago with Gary Busey never saw the light of day and it's got like a bunch of kind of like 80s talent in it and it it just it just never made it out I mean I actually ended up I mean this is what we put like when I say you put your heart and soul into something and then just to never see it and um I actually with that director I just called him up I said okay 
I want the footage. Like, I'm buying you and your editor pizza. Like, what do you need from me? I went over there, like, brought a pizza. We sat there and we pulled my footage. <laughs> wow. Like, <laughs> That's amazing. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then there's one case where a film was shot, never completed in post production, never did post production at all. So it was shot without sound. And um, a guy bought like all these reels for his uh, distribution company. And he found the reels to this long lost 1984 cheapo <sighs> martial arts flick. And he's like, he talked to the owners, the distribution owners. He goes, I want to, I want to. Put this film together and release it and it took him two years and it got released uh late 2021 the movie wow that's 37 so years. cool so hearing about like what you're saying like you want to get the works out that never got um yeah. made i mean now we're, we're in that era where we're getting all these long lost films now which i find very interesting because people are like we got a lot of we got a lot of film fans around it, like whatever happens right. it's just amazing yeah, that's so cool. That's it. That's an actually super inspires me to like look at and go, hey, you know, about that one film, like do something with it. Like I I did that with um, I've done that a couple of times where I just that, that something I was really proud of. And and I, I go back and, and that's how I become that's kind of like how I started becoming a producer is like I go back and I'm like, hey, give me, you know, would you be willing to like give me this and let me try to do something with it? And um, and sometimes the filmmakers have just completely moved on and, you know, like that just and they're like, yeah, <laughs> just, yeah exactly. all you have to do is ask and then put in the energy. Yeah, exactly. And the case with this one that from 1984, they caught they found a director who's also the star of the movie. And he's like, well, I don't really want to have anything to do with it. You know, I've moved on, but I'll give you my blessing to finish the film. You know, you want to, you want to finish it? Be my guest. I'll, I'll you know, get it out there. I'm, I'm okay with it. So he gave his blessing. That's great. So yeah, that's so cool. That's so cool. That's very, that really inspires me to keep doing, like keep doing and looking for my lost projects. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Luckily I don't have too many. I think I've just got, I have one that one script that I'm attached to that never happened that I think about a lot. And I think, and I keep thinking, should I reach out and just say, Hey, can, how can I help get this finished or, you know? Um, but yeah, this is, it's interesting. Um, there's just so much, so much creativity in the world. And, um, and, uh, Maybe I don't know. I don't know. With all the, about, the new streaming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Have you ever thought about directing a film yourself? Yeah, yeah. So that's that's definitely um part of my goals. So which is why when I decided that I wanted to learn to direct is why I went to David. So I just, you know, I, I called David and I said, you know, I've done at th that point I was like, I've done listen, I've done 30 TV movies. Mm -hmm. I want to direct. You know, but I don't know, but I didn't go to film school. I'm an actress. And he goes, well, listen, Meredith, you know more than you think you know about directing after 30 right. television movies, right? And I said, yeah, you're right. And and so he, um, so that's part of the plan. Like, So I'm getting, so I got my foot wet, last, my feet wet last year with the second unit. And then um, now I'm just trying to figure out, is it a Lifetime movie? I mean, sure, I wouldn't say no to a Lifetime movie because it's like what I know so well. But so I'm trying to figure out, is it a Lifetime movie? Because I know that formula really well for my first directing. Is it, t is it a Christmas movie, which I also have yeah. done my fair share of those. And, and, and that might be a better fit for me. Or is it, or do I do like, uh, do I do like this film Disconnected that I'm, I, star in and then after the fact attach myself as a producer to help get it out there and it's like my my the the filmmaker for that Jeanette that she just she 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 made that little film her calling card she 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 made that you know 15 minute film to show what she could do for narrative and it was and it's a beautiful work and it became a wonderful calling card and has opened her doors to to more directing so I'm I, I don't know. I'm still figuring out exactly what my first, and maybe it'll, maybe I don't have to figure it out. Maybe it's going to be handed to me or, or maybe, or maybe it's going to be a passion project. 
that I have to find all the money for. (laughs) So I'm, I'm open. And then, and, and I just, I just don't want to be chasing it. Like, I feel like just like I didn't have to chase David too hard. He basically said, yeah. And then he said, here, we got some stuff for you. And I'm like, perfect, perfect way to, to help me learn. And, and who better who better a mentor than David to yeah yeah you? oh my gosh if you it, learning how quick like if you can be on set and learn to work with actors in at the pace that David works with them and then you realize how important casting is I mean it's silly for me to say you know someone that's been around this long I mean obviously casting is very important but when you see it from the other side when you see how important having that person that fits that role, that's going to know their lines that can just step in and get the job done and not create a problem. And, you know, um, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's, it, it's great. Like I think being able to like run around and work with David, like um, it's like boot camp, you know? So <laughs> Yeah. And don't forget some of the big, biggest filmmakers in the world today didn't even go to film school as well look at quentin tarantino he was actually a video store clerk and then he's yes so just keep that in mind you don't always have to go to film school to be a director it's just about having that dream that's also about if you're if you're if you work hard enough you can make it happen yeah i think you're absolutely right is to put it out there and then you you make a plan and and i mean it's it's pretty amazing how what you know just once I asked how quickly, like I had the opportunities there. That's awesome. So what's yeah. next for you? At, um, what's next for you that you're currently in the midst of working on that you could talk about? Um, so as far as producing, um, we are finishing up. Um, it's t- the working title is called Spirit Quest. And that spirits like the spirits that you drink. And um, we're in the final stages. We're color correcting of this pilot. And and then from there, we have our eyes set on on a couple of different you know, networks that we want to get it to. Um, and then we, I also produced and star in um, a sizzle for a new, a ghost show, a ghost hunting show. So, um, and that, so we're, that's where we're going to kind of get that out there to the world. And we're deciding if we're going to expand the sizzle a little longer to a little bit, add some new elements to it. And then um, I'm hoping that Keeping Up With Joneses does come back for a season three and I can jump in as a second unit director on that. But as Gigi probably talked to you about, we're waiting. So I did the lead and that's all, it's all because of oh, yeah. Gigi. Horror film. Um, yes, in oh. um, Nightmare on uh, Nightmare at Prince Precinct eighty four. I, I think it's eighty four. I hope it's not eighty three. Anyway, um, so um, and that was because Gigi had worked with me in, in Killer Advice, and so right. she suggested me to to um, Sam, the director, and so we had a, an advanced screening, sold out advanced screening a few weeks ago, and it was amazing. So looking forward to that finding a home, yeah, and um, and that's got, that's another I, one. Like you've seen me in Killer Advice, but I don't usually like I usually play like the more upscale. That's why Killer Advice was such a gift because I I, I mean I, she was because I often play the more upscale you know women um, beating the odds or you know and and so to play this sheriff is just, it was such a great fun challenge for me. That's uh, awesome. And I loved it. And um, it was great fun. And so I think, I mean, that's going to find its perfect home and then that'll get out there to the world too. Yeah. I, I got so, I, I have a pretty good idea who might, who could pick that up and get it out there. I have a pretty good idea. Cause I've, yeah, I've seen a good, lot of, good. So. cause you know, the horror world probably better well, than yeah, I do. Yeah. So um, yeah. So that'll get out there and that'll be super fun. And then um dis- so and then I'm still auditioning all the time. The the film that I mentioned, the short that I mentioned, disconnected that um 
I played the the lead in that, it, and it's it's. I'm trying to figure out and hoping to make it work because it's got it's in a film in Scotland at the end of April, or oh, mid nice. end of April. So I I'm thinking a little trip to um, London and Scotland, and and I just watched the new this this new documentary with by David Letterman with the Edge and Bono, mm. and I just got I guess got to go to a like an advanced, a wonderful screening of that last night. So now I'm like, okay, I've got to go to Scotland. I've got to go to London. I've got to go to Dublin. So, <laughs> there you go. so I have a, a, I, and all of that while I continue to hustle up my next gig. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I got to say, it's been great talking to you about this. And oh, and well, thank you for reaching out. It's so fun. I'm glad to, we talked yeah. the day after International Women's Day, but we can pretend that we talked on International yeah, it's Women's fine. Day. It's fine. It's fine. It's <laughs> fine. Matter of fact, it's gonna, it's gonna, this is going to be on YouTube tomorrow, so we're all good. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah. It's perfect. But I had such a great blast, and you know, I hope people get to check out more of your stuff. I definitely will, and you know, I hope some of that lost projects you did will finally come to life eventually. And in the yeah. meantime, you know, everyone can check out not only your stuff; they can check out my stuff on the World Film Geek. YouTube channel, exclusive interviews. I'm still going to have some more ladies of films coming up um, okay. down the road and other interviews. And I hope um, everyone has a great day. So uh, thank you again. Thank you for having me. Have a good day, everybody. All right. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.